Hi, I'm Eric Wilkie. I'm one of the uh, Friendly Neighborhood Emergency Room Doctors. Uh, today, talking about contrast-induced nephropathy. Uh, contrast-induced nephropathy is a little bit of a problem for the emergency department as well as the hospital at large. Uh, it's a very significant cause of uh, morbidity and mortality inside the hospital. And it's the third leading cause of acute renal failure that's hospital-acquired, and that's after surgery and hypotension is the uh, top one and two. Um, so this is obviously is related to IV contrast. And where do patients get IV contrast? Well, they can get it by going to the cath lab. There's a decent amount of contrast that's given to the patients. Um, you could get it uh, if the radiologist is doing a pulmonary angiogram. Well, wait a minute. Who am I kidding? Radiologists don't do pulmonary angiograms anymore. Um, but uh, CAT scans, clearly, CAT scans get IV contrast. But seriously, if anybody has a radiologist who actually does interventional things, I'd like to hear about it. So how is contrast-induced nephropathy defined? The standard definition, and there are a couple different ones to pick from, but the most common is a 25% increase in the serum creatinine levels from baseline within about 40 hours of exposure to the intravascular radiographic contrast material. So the next question would be, well, how does this happen? You know, what is the etiology behind the nephropathy? Uh, and it's not entirely clear, although there's uh, at least five factors that have been identified um, is uh, either additive or causative uh, in, in this injury. One is just a vasoconstriction that can occur uh, in the renal vascular bed. One is a decrease in renal blood flow. Uh, there's the higher osmolality that activates a feedback loop uh, that can increase tubular hydrostatic pressure and leading to a decrease in glomerular filtration. And the other is a reactive oxygen species formation. Uh, and the last one is just a direct toxicity on the uh, tubules of the, of the uh, kidneys. So what do we do about this? Uh, from an emergency department standpoint, uh, you have to pick patients that might be at high risk. And there's a scoring mechanism um, that was published uh, that seems to be helpful at least identifying on which ones are, are the high risk patients. And how you do this is you look at several factors. Uh, did the patient have a, an episode of hypotension with systolic blood pressure less than 80? Do they have evidence of congestive heart failure? Do they have an intraarterial balloon pump? Uh, are they older than 75 years of age? Are they uh, anemic with a hematocrit of less than 39% in men or 35% in women? Do they have diabetes? How much contrast is used? Uh, in our scans, we have a 64 slice scanner, so the typical contrast that's administered is somewhere between 50 and 100 cc's. Uh, then you factor in what the creatinine or the GFR is, uh, and then you take the score and you can add it up. Now, if the score is uh, 0 to 6, you've got less than a 1% chance of having a, a dialysis, and, and about 7.5% where you'll have some contrast induced nephropathy. Uh, 6 to 10, it jumps up to 14% for contrast-induced nephropathy and 0.12% for dialysis risk. Now, once you cross that 10 mark, I think there's a significant change. So between 11 and 16, over a quarter, 26.1 will get the uh, nephropathy, and 1%, or 1 out of 100, uh, will then require dialysis. And anything over 16 is very dangerous. It's 57.3% uh, that has the nephropathy in as high as 12.8% uh, that will require dialysis. So that's better than 1 in 20 at that point that will require the dialysis. So clearly we want to protect these patients uh, from harm. And there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, so our procedure that we're currently going off of is, is you take your high-risk patients, you calculate the risk score. If it's greater than 16, you really need to double check. Does, is this the right test for this patient? Um, and is there something else that can be done? You really need to weigh the risk and benefits. Uh, if the score is less than 16 but greater than 10, then we recommend that you start some renal protection measures. And the renal protection measures obviously are using uh, non-ionic contrast. That's pretty standard in most places. Uh, you can use N-acetylcysteine, uh, which is also mucormist or NAC for short. Uh, you can give that. There's conflicting data in the literature. Some studies say there's some benefit in protection. Others say there's no change. Uh, so in my viewpoint, um, even though the data is not robust, uh, and there definitely isn't a strong uh, case for the helpfulness of NAC, uh, the downside is pretty low. 
So other than the fact that it smells like raw eggs and makes the place reek, uh, there's not too many negatives with it. So I figure if it can help a certain percentage of the population that's receiving the contrast, then why not? Uh, clearly holding metformin for 48 hours uh, is a, a wise thing to do. And the one thing that has been shown to be helpful um, in protecting the kidneys, although the information uh, or the data that's published is not overly robust, it's not super large numbers, um, it's an isolated uh, study, but using D5W with bicarb at 3 milliliters per kilogram per hour for one hour prior to contrast and then one milligram per kilogram per hour for six hours post contrast that can be extended up to 12 hours for high risk patients. Uh, it seems to be oh, at least the one piece of evidence that, that is out there. So our protocol again is using non ionic contrast giving D5W with bicarb both pre and post contrast giving mucormist at 24 milligrams, I'm sorry, 2400 milligrams uh, one hour prior and 600 milligrams BID for the next day and then holding metformin. Now we'll put our procedure up online. We've published it through Google Docs. We'll put the link up. Feel free to download it, modify it, throw it away if you want. Uh, if you notice something that might make it better, please let me know. You can email me at eric, E-R-I-C dot Wilkie, W-I-L-K-E at gmail.com. Thank you very much.